Well, hello there. Do you remember the nice little inductrix or tiny root things? Uh, as much as I love my slightly larger sort of 100 mil quads for flying around outside, nothing beat these for inside. Very stable, um, bang them into anything and they were absolutely fine. The only trouble, as everybody knows with these, is the motors were a bit underpowered, so it was fine until you put the camera on it, which, although it only weighs a couple of grams, you basically go around full throttle. You don't, you don't have any sort of punch. So, having had a, a bit of spare cash, because it wasn't much, so I bought four of these little guys from Banggood, uh, and quite why they're still in the packaging, I don't know. These are the, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Chaoli uh, 6x15, little brushed motors. And I thought, brilliant, I'll swap these out, I'll get more power. But one of the things I didn't like about this is I have to use this controller. I don't have one of these uh, Spectrum type DSM radios, so I bought this as, as the pack. And the range on this is shockingly bad. I mean, I can fly around a house okay, but I flew it in quite an open space outdoors when it was um, quite calm, and it, it failed after about 20 meters which seems a bit bad. Also, this doesn't travel very well. This doesn't move, so it will snap. Um, and I don't like the sticks, and you can't do anything with the flight controller, so I thought it'd be great to use it with my Tyrannus. So then I ended up spending some more on this thing called the, the B-Core F3 Evo flight controller. Now, the reason this thing is brilliant is it because it is the same size as that and fits in the right direction. Also, amazingly in this, they have got, um, if you see this wire sticking up, it's got an inbuilt FreeSky compatible receiver. Now, although I'm not expecting the normal um, one and a half kilometers range that you might expect on a FreeSky receiver, I'm confident, A, I'll at least be able to get around a house, which at least do most of this, probably further because the radio is going to be more powerful, it's going to send out a better signal. Uh, and I'll be able to use my sticks, um, configure it how I want because it's an F3 flight controller so I can do multiple modes and have it really, um, so I can flip if I want to, I don't know how it's got enough power for that. Um, but basically I'll be able to use my normal radio and, and that's hooray. So <sighs> that then got me to thinking, okay, if I'm going to swap the motor out and the flight controller when I take all that out to swap it, I'll have the frame left on its own, which it seems a lot of work. So then I ended up buying one of these EA Sheen E010 frames, which is pretty much identical. Um, and then of course to go with that, I got some props for it. Um, so yeah, the only thing I'm actually going to be doing is taking this camera out and installing that on that thing and then I can give this to Sophie to play with or something, because on its own, this thing's really great, stable, has its own controller, brilliant, but this thing is going to be my new build minus this camera. Um, so yeah, let's build it and, and see what happens. Well, here we are again, and we've done some building. The little Inductrix is back to its stock settings. I must say, I've just had a quick fly of this, it's so stable, it's really a great little indoor uh, flyer for practicing. Meanwhile though, uh, this fits in the box I was using with the Inductrix, which is very good. Um, so a couple of things, the initial motors and stuff went in very easy, that was like five minutes. Um, it was obviously easy enough to solder up this uh, flight controller, not a problem. Some little issues with the fit of this. Uh, the frame is slightly different in the fact that it doesn't have a screw hole at the back here. So we've just got the first three screws holding it in. Um, there was also uh, a bit of an issue with the battery. Um, if you look here, where this bit came across, this was actually blocked, so the battery would only go to there. So I basically snipped this away so I could get the battery uh, in all the way. It was also a little bit loose. So what I've done, I've just got a little tiny piece of um, foam in there and what that does is just create this nice bit of friction. So when you slide the battery in, it stays there pretty tight, it's not going anywhere. Um, had to 
buy one of these little batteries. It was only 99p off eBay, um, just so I could get the same sort of attachment. Uh, and the only other thing that took a while was actually getting this bit screwed on. That was very fiddly. Uh, there's these little rubber pegs which have to go in and then the screw has to go through two sections and they all have to compress down. You need about three pairs of hands and really small ones to, to get it right, but that's okay. I found the antenna position a little bit strange right at the front here, but I don't think it matters. The board itself was a little bit weird to bind. Um, it's all covered up now so you can't see it, but basically there's two metal um, solder connections which you have to bridge with something. So basically, I because binding's not hard enough, um, now I had to hold a little tiny piece of metal across whilst having the radio unbind and plugging the battery in and hoping that was going to work, which it has done. Um, I got Betaflight 3.01 on there, I think. Uh, I've got it at stock settings, so let's go see how it flies, shall we? Take it from there. So off we go for a little house tour, and I actually flew it with the stock pids, and what I've got here is some changes. Although it flew pretty stably and was okay, um, I kept the pids the same, but what I've done is I've changed the um, rates and expo, and I'm flying in acro now instead of angle. Angle was, it was okay once flying, but it seemed like you bash about a couple of times and it would kind of lose its way uh, and not come back up as it as it was. So this is flying in manual with uh, some different curves basically but the pids are the same and it's pretty stable um, and it's got a nice little burst of speed on it. So I'd say with the motors they're better than the Inductrix. You don't have to give it oodles of throttle to do anything at all and you don't have to give it loads and loads every time you just drop down a little bit. So it's better that said, it hasn't got the punch that um, I was really after, or sort of like a normal 200 size quad. It just it just doesn't have that. Uh, that said, it's okay. It's it's better, as I said, but it's it could be better still. But I'm having some fun with it. So we're just doing a general tour at the moment, and the VTX is going okay. It's going through a couple of walls, so you're getting these interruptions and in, uh, or interference. Uh, this thing's got a, a nice little turn of speed on it when you want. In my house, where I, I kind of haven't really got a good setup, um, and I should explain that the dog on the cat post is because the dog loves the cat and so climbs up there and then she can't get back down and we have to rescue her. So as I was saying, my house isn't got the layout where I can get a good circuit, so I kind of go with the flying of I'm exploring, I'm trying to fit through interesting little gaps. So I kind of want it to be able to be nice and stable and be able to fly slow as well as having the turn of speed and that's why I was messing with the curves. So I've got quite a, a big expo range there so I've got a lot of uh, middle stick range where it doesn't do a lot and then it can go crazy at the ends which works for me. I've managed the, the house tour although the, uh, to be fair this is about the fifth take of uh, managing to crash into something or doing it fine and then running out of battery when it was still downstairs. So, house tour done, pulling back into the room, quite happy with that. I would have gone outside but it's raining so no in and out of windows today. So in terms of can this thing flip and roll, yeah absolutely and with the rates I did, not a problem. The thing you'll find is, well I found, is it's mainly about timing at the moment. Um, you've got to know exactly how long to get the stick for before hitting the throttle again and, and then you can pull it off. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of practice and there is a drop as you can see. Um, but if you do it perfect it does actually go right. Uh, but for me it's learning about the timing, about how long exactly it takes to do a full flip so I'm not heading towards something. I'm obviously trying it in quite a, uh, a tight space. But yeah, it's good. It can do it. So I see this as kind of an incremental thing. 
as I said, it's better than the Inductrix. The motors are more powerful. They're not as powerful as I want, but I don't want to spend the big money which gets me the proper powerful motors because I'm a skimplin. Um, I totted up the amount I've actually spent to see if it worked out as good value for money or not. Frame, £2.41. Convert these dollars if you want. Props, £1.66. The flight controller was the expensive thing, like £24. The motors, £7.50 for four. Um, the VTX and camera already had, this was the this old FX79 that you had to decase. Although recently I've been getting the EA Sheen TX2 and 3 and I've been paying £15, £17. They're up to 20 ish at the moment. Uh, but look out for details or, or offers on those. They always seem to have some. And 99p for this little battery lead. And I printed this camera holder, although they're a couple of quid. So it came up at about 56 quid to, to run this, which is pretty good. But it's on par with the other sort of ready to fly quads you can get. Uh, which may or may not be as suitable for indoor flying. So it's kind of, well, I don't want to be down on it, but it's kind of like, well, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It, I mean, this is the best thing for flying indoors because of the way the props and the prop guards work. Uh, I just wanted to get a bit better as well. So I'll keep a look out and see what's coming up on the motors and I'll try and get better at doing flips. Uh, it just it wants more power, but at the same time, of course, more powerful motors equals less flight time. Four minutes is what I'm getting from this at the moment, um, which is all right. It's not amazing, uh, which is kind of the summary. It's all right. It's not amazing. Uh, I'll shove the parts in the description. Uh, you can make your own mind up about your indoor flies. But frame-wise, um, I like the setup. I like the sort of the, the deducted idea. For indoors, I think that's that's a good thing. But we'll do some more experimenting and see what we can do. See you next time.